with none other. Guys, look at me. I don't look like Pac, but I'm basically pulling a Pac here. Trap trick is insane. Um, let's get right into the deck profile though. Oh wait, 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 wait. Before we do, make sure to like and subscribe if you guys do enjoy these kind of videos. And uh, that's, that's really it. Let's get into the deck profile here. Alright, so we're starting off with three of the brand new Trap Trick Pudica. This card is absolutely insane. So it's funny because when I saw a lot of deck profiles online originally, people were on two or on one. And I just, I don't understand why they're on two or one because this card is absolutely nuts. What it does for you is it gets you to the field spell. The field spell, can't speak. The field spell gets you to an extra normal summon. And every, if you think about every deck in the game, any deck that gets an extra normal summon, those cards are either on the ban list or something has happened to where they're not playable anymore, right? Here, you get another card that's literally gonna get you an extra normal summon, which is absolutely insane. And it has a really cool special summon effect where when it's special summoned, you can banish a card your opponent controls, or a monster, I should say. And it comes back during the next standby phase, but it's really good because in your turns two and turns three, after you've already set up your board, you can pretty much start banishing their cards and then go for game, right? So we're playing three of the Pudica, this card's insane. Three Mermelio, of course. Uh, it's This is a two card combo, it's an insane two card combo. So if you just open these two, you're fine. And then you're playing three Mantis as well. Um, I know it looks like a lot of normal summons because typically in decks you don't want to play cards or you don't want to play too many normal summons I should say but in this deck specifically you need to be playing these ratios because one you're getting an extra normal summon a lot of the time off the Pudica but a lot of the time these combos are like two card combos so you really need to see at least one of these normal summons so yeah we're playing nine but you get two normal summons in a turn essentially right so that's why we're playing the nine then we're playing the two Dionia. you only want to play two because um, it honestly should be a one of but I played two because you don't want to draw it. You want one in your deck at all times. So that's why I like playing the two Dionia. And then we're playing two of the new uh, Arachno, whatever this one's called. This one's pretty much a built-in Lord of the Heavenly Prisons for the deck. Um, and it's insane because it protects your back row. It's a free special summon for you. Helps you go into more rank fours. So I really like playing two of this. Again, it's one of those cards that I like to search in the mid to late game. So that's why I'm playing two. I know two is a weird ratio, but... Uh, it just makes sense. I don't know. It just makes sense in the deck, right? I didn't want to play one. I didn't want to play three. So I thought two was perfectly fine. And then we are playing the one Lord. The reason I'm playing Lord is because it's actually searchable in this deck. Um, one of your go-to combos, you go on Gallant Granite. Gallant Granite searches you into this. So you pretty much set up your whole board and then you search this. And then what this lets you do is it like protects your back row and then on your next turn you have a big body that you can like push for a lot of damage with. So that's why I like playing the one. And then I know you guys are going to hate me, but we're playing three Fenrir. Um, it just makes sense in the deck. The whole deck is Earth. And um, it's just one of those things where it deck thins for you a little bit. Um, and I don't know, I just really like 3 Fenrir. The card's really powerful, and uh, especially in today's format. And then sometimes, I'll show you guys this early, but sometimes you can actually go into a really powerful Link monster here, Asa. And then you can Asa take your opponent's Fenrir if you're going against Kashtura, and then you can make an Arise Heart. So. I don't know, it's funny that we're playing uh, Fenrir and then it just kind of works out that way. I don't know, I really like this card. I think it made sense as an Earth. And that's it for the Trap Trick stuff. Or, um, there's more Trap Trick stuff, but that's it for like the monsters essentially with the, with the non-engine monsters. But then for the Hand Traps, I decided to play 3 Ash, uh, 3 Nib, as well as 3 Imperm. So, essentially I just thought I decided to play the best Hand Traps for today's format. Uh, Ash and Imperm are obviously really good against Branded, really good into Kosh really good into a lot of different decks, Sprite as well. And then Nib is more specifically for the uh, Kosh matchup, but I will say this about Nib. So the really cool thing about Nib is that a lot of people, so let's say you're playing in Sword Soul, so I'm around two today with Sword Soul, right? So when you're playing in Sword Soul, they put up Baron so that you don't have to deal with a Nib or they can play around a Nib. But what the really cool thing about Nib is, is that if they go Baron and then you activate the Nib, essentially you're forcing the Baron to gate out. And then now, even though you're not breaking their board, you're getting rid of the Baron negate, which a lot of the time is enough for you to just be able to push for game afterwards anyway. So that's the really cool thing about this card, where it's like if your opponent tries to play a round nib by setting up a negate, you're baiting that negate. If your opponent doesn't set up a negate, it just breaks board. So I thought these nine were perfectly fine. This is uh, also searchable off of the uh, thing you were talking about for the... Oh yes, I completely forgot. So I never did that. But yeah, technically this is searchable. It's a rock. Um, the reason I never did was because uh, a lot of time when I was searching, if I'm setting up my own board, I didn't want to nib myself. But technically it is searchable. If you open a subpar hand, it's a searchable card. So it's insane. So uh, yeah, nine hand traps here. Uh, and the really cool thing is Imperm is also a board breaker a lot of the time for you. So it's really nice in that sense. 
And then uh, for the spells here, we're playing one of the new garden. This is a card that gives you an extra normal summon. Um, that's the main effect that you're always going to be using. Um, so it's really powerful. The other effect is that you can banish a card you control, or a monster you should control, I mean. And then you can special summon a trap trick from your hand or from your uh, graveyard, which is really nice. So that's why I'm playing that. And then I don't have Prosperities, so I'm playing this card. Um, listen, it should be Prosperity, I'm going to be honest with you. But this card is actually low-key nuts. A lot of the time, if it puts a Trap Trick monster, so you can, it's a, it's a trade-in for the deck. And you can either ditch a Trap Trick monster or a normal Trap card. And so a lot of the time, it's actually kind of good because there are cards like Dionia where on normal summon, it's special summons from the graveyard. So this can help set up stuff like Dionia. So um, it, it came up, I mean, I think it should be Prosperity. Prosperity is probably better, but I don't have those, so we're playing this. And then, yeah, that's it for the spells. So we're playing very little spell count. And then we're playing uh, three of the brand new Holtea. This is one of the best cards in the deck. This card's insane. Um, it summons itself onto the field, so it's like a Shade Brigadine for you. It's a built-in Shade Brigadine. It's a whole card, which is really nice. And then on top of that, the graveyard effect is really cool. You can banish it from the graveyard, and then uh, you can target a Trap Trick monster that you control in your graveyard and special summon it. So it's a follow-up for you on top of it being like just a starter for you. So that's insane. Not a lot of cards are starters and then follow up right then we're playing three of the best trap hole card um against kosh obviously this is really important there was actually a lot of times where uh you just flip this and on their unicorn and if they don't have extenders they're kind of just done for their turn and then the really cool thing about floodgate is that or all the trap hole cards but the really cool thing about floodgate specifically is that like you set this up and then you can reset it up and then you can reset it up so as long as you get one in rotation you're fine and then for the other trap hole cards and the last cards of the deck, we're playing one Grave Diggers, one uh, Trap Trick Trap Hole Nightmare, one of the new Terrifying, which is really nice, and one Bottomless. Uh, I'm just playing these for different names so that we have more holes in the deck. So that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards on the dot. Um, very consistent, especially with that spell card that's not Prosperity, but kind of Prosperity. It's my budget Prosperity, my trade-in. Um, but yeah, the deck's very insanely powerful. And a lot of people don't honestly know what it does. And there's certain times where you're making plays and your opponent's just watching you and it's just, it's really strong. Uh, for the extra deck here, we're playing three Sarah, of course. Um, this card's insane. Obviously, you have to be playing three. We're playing the one Trap Tricks Adipus. This card is really powerful. It helps you go for game a lot of the time. It boosts all your Trap Trick monster by a thousand. It has some other effects as well, but the main effect is that like it just becomes a big monster for you. I will say this, though, actually. Um, something I didn't mention in the main deck that I kind of want to mention now is that Sarah is really powerful with something like Parallel Ixie. And Parallel Ixie is an insanely powerful card, but I just thought, like, I don't want to say it's a win more card but it just didn't make sense to be i don't know i felt like it didn't make sense to be playing it you guys can play parallel like seed i would say before we get too far into the extra deck um you guys if you don't have access to fenrir if fenrir is a little bit expensive or you guys don't want to play fenrir's these can be parallel xc's instead so um just wanted to give you guys that option just another extender that you guys can be playing i just think fenrir has more purposes so that's why i'm playing that but anyways the one out of plus then we're playing two Rafflesia and one uh pinkulia i don't know if i'm saying that right but we're playing these three i'm not playing Al alamaris i think that card's bad um you never really go into it these are just the perfect ratios um one of the main combos you're ending on this this with a sarah with at least one floodgate trap hole so like if you're ending on like four or five disruptions just off like one to two cards it's insane because there are times where you can end on like more disruptions like this which this card is insane because with holtea this makes it so that's a phoenix wing wing blast so it's just a really powerful card that you can end on as well this Gallant Granite is part of uh, one of your combo lines, not all of your lines, but one of your lines if you want to search the Lord of the Heavenly Prison. A lot of the time you do that if you see that you have like three trap cards in your hand and you're setting three, you don't want to lose to you know a Lightning Storm or a Harpies. So um, if you see that kind of hand, then you want to go into this, so search Lord. Um, one Zeus, of course. Zeus is obviously very powerful against a lot of everything. Zeus is important. And then the one, the Arise Heart, um, it just gave you the option, it gave me the option to be playing this because I'm playing the Fenrir, which is absolutely insane. Then we're playing two Asa. The reason we're playing two is because you don't want this card to get extra deck ripped. So anything else, you don't really care if it gets extra deck ripped. It's not the end of the world. Um, but this one's really important because specifically we're playing the Fenrir. And then we want to take our opponent's Fenrir so that we can link climb and start going for like, or pushing for a lot of damage, I should say. So two cards that help us push for a lot of damage are Boral Sword and Axis Code. Both of these cards are accessible. Um, doesn't really matter like which one you go into. A lot of time when you go into these, you're going into them for game. Adipus also helps you go in for game. So yeah, that's that's pretty much for the, for the extra deck. I think the extra deck was really, really powerful here. And then uh, I'll show you guys the side deck as well. The side deck, I really liked it, honestly. Um, there were There's two cards that I would swap, and I'll just get into that first. So first of all, I'm playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster, and then I'm playing two Cyclone. Um, these are the two that I would swap. I'm not sure exactly what I would change them for, though. I just wanted more back hate because I know Labyrinth is a thing. 
Um, I didn't play Labyrinth today, so maybe that's why I didn't like them, but you know, I think this card is really good. Uh, playing 3 Dark Hole, of course, you don't want to get Ibli locked. Um, Ibli, oh, I will say this, the another really powerful thing about Asa is that this deck wants to Link Summon anyways, so if your opponent does put Ibli on your side of the field, you can Normal Summon any of your Trap Trick monsters, it doesn't really matter which one because they're all Earth, so you can use this plus the Ibli into an Asa, so... Like, Ibni's not the end of the world, but I don't want to deal with it. So for that reason, I just played 3 Dark Hole. And then this is just a really good generic board breaker. And we're also playing 3 Evenly Matched. Um, we don't really care about the battle phase, as long as we can clear our opponent's board, we're winning the game. So a lot of board breakers you guys can see here. And then for when we're going first into games 3, depending on matchups, uh, 3D Barrier, absolutely insane. And this is another reason why we like Fenrir, is because we're playing Gozen Match. Fenrir is funny enough in Earth. All of your monsters are Earth. So when you know you're going first, you can side something out like Nibiru's and then side in three Gozins. And then this makes it so that you can end on your typical combo board, which is very powerful on its own. But then on top of it, you have a Gozin match, which is absolutely insane. So um, that's it. I feel like I talked a lot, but first place, baby, Trap Trick. This deck is absolutely insane. People don't see it coming and it has a has a really good... It's weird. It has a really good Karsh Terror matchup, even though it sounds like it doesn't. But the fact that it can just search Floodgate Trap Hole... Like a deck that can search the out to Koshter is absolutely insane and then on top of that I can search protection in the Lord of the Heavenly Prisons it has built-in protection with the Arachno whatever the one that one is so um, I think this deck is very powerful now uh, thank you Alpha for holding the camera I appreciate you um, and that's that's really it for the deck profile I hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel uh, we do ten full videos a week five long videos five short videos which Alpha is gonna help me um, film some short videos after this, so we're gonna be doing some shorts. But thank you guys all for watching, I appreciate every single one of you. With that, Spanko and Alpha, cameraman, signing out. Peace. This play mat with this deck is really sus.